Hello, this is Loida from loveacrylicpainting.com and today we are going to be talking about acrylic pouring supplies for beginners. I'm going to show you all the supplies that I currently have, the ones that I own and use, and I'm going to tell you which ones are the basics, the must-haves if you're a beginner and want to start trying acrylic pouring. Um, I also have extra things that will add some details, some glitter, some sparkle to your paintings. And um, you can get these, you know, as soon as you want, or you can wait until you have a little bit of, of experience with acrylic pouring. Uh, but I, I am going to show you which ones are the basic and the must-haves. That way you don't spend a bunch of money um, on extra things that maybe you might not need at the beginning. Okay, so let's get started. So the most basic things that you need are paint and a painting surface, right? Those are just like the must-haves. You can't do them, obviously, if you don't have those two things. Um, so for painting surfaces, I have different things that you can try doing your paintings on. So this is like a canvas. This is a canvas panel. So I like the canvas better, the stretched canvas, instead of the canvas panel, because these tend to warp. And I'm gonna show you, I did one painting. This is a canvas panel, and you can see how it is kind of like this. Um, you know, I do like how it turned out, but it's just, you know, it just warps. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to straighten this. I am going to try to straighten it with another technique that I have that I use for watercolor paper, but I'm not sure if it's going to work for that. But these are great to just kind of start, um, getting your hands dirty and trying acrylic pouring without spending a lot of money. These I actually found at my dollar store. All of these I found at my dollar store. But all of these, um, these are canvas panels and this is a regular stretched canvas. Um, they were all a dollar, so this is a great way to start trying acrylic pouring without spending a bunch of money on good canvas. Um, the other thing you can use is just a piece of cardboard also to just you know test it out you don't want to you're not going to want to keep that right you don't want to sell it either it's just mostly for practicing i also have these pieces of wood so any wood surface you can try painting on and i have for example these paintings and these are all wood okay i i painted these things i'm not sure if you can really tell or if it's too dark I think it's too dark right there. But anyways, um, these are all paintings that I did with these kind of pieces of wood. So that's another option. Another option is watercolor paper. Um, I have two brands. Let me show you. So I have these two brands. One is smaller than the other one. So they're just different sizes and um but they serve the same purpose it's just depending on like how big you want to get you can also mount these on canvas so you might want to get like a bigger size and a smaller size uh, that just depends on what you want to use the color the watercolor paper for if it's just going to be to practice or if you actually want to mount it on a canvas panel or a piece of wood or something like that so um this is just more canvas um these are already like the you know better not cheap version of the ones that i showed you earlier these are already like a, a good quality that you can use for your paintings for keeping for selling um and you can get these in all sorts of sizes okay so then next obviously we need our paint we have I have different sizes. The ones that I get like the bigger jugs are for the black and the white because I do tend to use those a lot. And, um, and then I have a couple different smaller ones. I have a metallic white. I have, 
um, a gold one. I have this other kind of version, which is more like a paste, but um, this I just need to thin it out a little bit more with a little bit more water and a little bit of uh, pouring medium. So just start with a cheap version of paint and as you want to start making maybe better quality paintings or want to start selling them, maybe you can start going into like um, the ones that are more pigmented, better quality. Um, so for now, I would suggest just, you know, starting with basic acrylic paint, not worrying too much about the quality for now, um, unless you want to, right? But the next thing I want to show you is these cups. You need cups to mix your paint with your pouring medium. Okay, so I just use this and I use my sticks. It's just to mix them, okay? These are Jimbo Woodcraft sticks. So all of these things that I've mentioned so far are essentials. You need something to mix your paint in, you need your paint, you need your painting surfaces, you need cups to mix your paint. Now, you also need a pouring medium. So this is also a must have. You don't have to get this big gallon of pouring medium. You can try smaller versions, which are, which are a little bit cheaper. And there are other brands, but you know, this one is kind of like the cheapest one for my personal uses. Um, there's Liquitex, and I'll put the link for that one as, on the bottom of the video as well. And I'll have links of all of this um, down below the video. So that way you know where to go to get all of these things in case you want to start building your own kit. Um, but you can start also with Elmer's glue as a pouring medium. So I do suggest you try this out. It's great. But if you're on a tight budget, you can start with Elmer's glue, paint, and a little bit of distilled water to make your paints flow. So these two are must-haves as well. It just depends on which variety you want to get. There's also Liquitex, which, which is a little bit more expensive and gives also great results. But it just depends on what type of budget you have. So those are basic essentials. Now, let me show you one more thing that is an essential. So you need something that you can put your painting on, that way your painting is not directly on the surface. That way you let the paint drip over the edges of your painting. Um, so one thing, one option that you can do is if you don't want to spend any more money is you can just use these cups, place them upside down, and then put your painting on top of that and just pour your paint right there. Um, you will need a plastic cover. So this one, as you can see, this ugly yellow plastic cover, I just got at the dollar store. And that one is just to protect the surface of your working area, of your table, of your furniture. And it's also to catch the, you know, paint drips from your painting. So you can just go with that, you know, get the tablecloth. That one is, an, is another essential item that you need because you need something to catch the paint underneath your painting. So that's kind of like the cheap way. It's getting a plastic cloth, a plastic table cover from your dollar store, or you can get like these bigger rolls of plastic on Amazon. I'll have the, that link on the bottom as well. However, I have a couple of other options that you can do, and I'll start with the cheap option. So these are push pins, and you can get four push pins and just pin them one on each corner. And then that will help you lay your painting on top of the surface with a little bit of, um, of a gap in between the surface and the painting. So that's one thing that's like the cheapest option or the cups, you know, those two are like the cheap versions. However, I like doing or using 
something like this. This is a stacking rack, which I purchased um, in the kitchen section. So this is super cool because as you can see, I can just move it around. It's, it leaves a lot of room underneath where I can you know, scoop up the paint with a palette. Um, it's just awesome. It has these holes all around the surface where the paint can drip. And um, it's pretty big for a canvas, you know, it works well. So this is one of the items that I love. And you can store this away. You can like actually fold these, you fold them down below and you can store it, you know, it doesn't take that much space. So you could use this directly on top of your tablecloth and that would work. Or you can use also, so before, I, before I show you that, the other reason I like this is because you can just grab it and move it, right? And if you have cups and you want to move your painting to like another area, you would have to, you know, pick up your painting, maybe, you know, put some fingerprints on the painting while you're trying to move it and then move the cups individually, place them somewhere else and then put the cups and then put your painting over it again. And so this way, it just allows me to carry my painting wherever it is that I want to put it on and just allow it to dry while I clean up the rest of my surface. So that's that option. But I also like this other option. I like this one better, but this one already came with this huge cookie sheet pan that I bought also in the cooking area of the of Walmart, um, but they also have it on Amazon. And this just came with it. So this is great because you can just put it on your pan. You can put your painting on top. It, the paint will drip on the bottom. Um, the reason I like this version better than this is because, as you can see, there's no place to put my, my spatula underneath to scoop the paint out in case I need to pour some paint on top of my painting. But I could lift this up and then pick up the paint, put it on top of my painting on the bare spots, and then put it back down. So that is an option. Um, it's just, you know, it's just more work, you know, more steps of, you know, pulling this up rather than just having to scoop the paint from below. But that is an option. You can also use this right on top of your surface of your tablecloth. And you can use the cookie sheet pan along with this rack. This is my favorite option because um, the paint just falls onto the cookie sheet. I can move this, put it somewhere else for the paint to dry, and I can wash my cookie sheet immediately so that I can get rid of all the paint. So those are, they're not must-haves, but they are really nice to have. Um, and then this and the cups are like the must-haves, but the cheap version along with the tablecloth. So the other thing that I wanted to show you is this level. This is not essential, but it's also good to have because you can place it on top of your surface and that way it'll tell you if your surface is level or not and the paint won't drip to one side or the other. And that way it's all uniform and if you like a design that you made on a painting, um, you won't have the problem of coming back later and then realizing that the paint just dripped all over to one end and your design just got ruined. So that's one nice thing to have, but not essential. The other thing that you need to have, well, it's kind of like a must have, but you could go without until you're a little bit more experienced. But well, this is a polyacrylic protective varnish for your paintings. So um, this, it's not definitely necessary when you start, but it is kind of necessary for when you want to keep a painting because you want to protect it 
from the environment. If later on it gets dirty and you want to wipe it off and clean it, you need to have some sort of protective uh, finish on top so that you're able to clean it with the rag. So it's not completely essential at the beginning, but it is as you go along just to protect your paintings. And you can get this in smaller sizes as well. And obviously for this, it's gonna be necessary that you get a paintbrush. So if you get this, this is necessary. Um, this is kind of necessary as well. If you are wanting to give your painting surface a coat of some sort of color. So if you want to, you know, paint it white or black uh, before you do a pouring, then this is going to be a must have. And you can use it for your varnish as well. This is not a must have. Um, this is mostly used for like making designs on my paintings or um, just kind of uh, grabbing the paint that dripped on the tablecloth and then putting that on top of my painting uh, on some bare areas, but you can do that with a spatula as well. So this is kind of um, not essential as well because you can easily scoop up the paint with your finger and just use your fingers to cover some areas, but I do like just having a spatula to scrape off the paint and put it all over my painting. And this is also very useful when you want to do the swiping method on your painting. So this is great, not completely essential, but it's awesome to have, not very expensive as well. These are not essential. These are paint markers. Um, they're called painters, uh, but they're metallic markers. And these I just use to make some details, add details to my paintings after they have dried. Now these are something new that I barely got. These are just glitter, okay? I'm not sure if it's gonna work as I plan to um, with my paintings. I'm not sure if it's gonna look good or not. Um, I tried some a little bit earlier on another painting. I didn't end up liking it very much, but I am gonna you know test different colors and see if I like them. But this is just like extras, you know, get glitter, get stones, get golden leaves. Um, all of these are just to add some details, some dimension to your paintings. And let me show you. something else that I forgot. So this is another thing that I bought. It's called Diamond Dust. And um, I did try this on some paintings. I do think I like it depending on when you use it. But like I said, all of these are not essentials. They're just to add some extra um, sparkle to your paintings. This is uh, sandpaper. It's not essential. This is just to be used with the wood um, if you are using wood. But you know, if you just wanna stick with canvas, you don't need to have that. Now, one last, I'm not sure if it's the last one. I think it's the last item. Oh no, I have two more items to show you. So let me move this. So I have two more items to show you. One of them is this and you probably are thinking what the heck am I gonna do with personal lubricant and anti-breakage serum you know these are for personal use right and they kind of serve a double purpose because I can use them on myself and I can use them for my paintings as well but these um, they're great for your paintings because you can use them you can add them to your paint stir them a little bit and then pour your paint and this is going to help create some cells. Cells are like circle-like structures or circle-like shapes that form on your painting and um, this helps promote that. Either one works. They're made out of silicone. It's like the skin-friendly version of silicone. Um, it's called dimethicone. 
but that's the reason why these work. So these are not essential to begin with. You can start with just paints, but this is like a nice addition to create some uh, cells. If you use that along with this, which is my next item, this is a heat gun. If you use those two together, that will help the cells form even more. So you'll get more cells. So this is not a must have as well, but also a nice addition. Or if you want to start creating some of these nice designs on your paintings from the start. So you can start with this. You can leave it until later if you'd like. So I think that's it. Those are all my supplies that I have for now. I do have other things, but those are mostly for like storing all of these supplies. And I'll make another video where I show you what I use to store everything that I have. But for now, that's it. I am going to post all of the links for all these items below the video. That way you can go ahead and start making your own kit according to your budget. And also don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you also click on the bell icon that is below the video so that you can get the notifications whenever I upload a new video. That way you are always up to date with, with what's going on and you can start trying new projects. Also, I have some links down below which are awesome. One is for a free cheat sheet for beginners. So go ahead and check that out. It's also in the description below. And until my next video, happy pouring with sparkles and all.